joining us. Thank How you. would you describe your portrayal of Richard Nixon in this film? Sympathetic or empathetic. Many people are saying it's a very vulnerable and tragic portrayal for someone so infamous in American history. Yes. Well, he was a mixture. He was... There was a great cloud of infamy over Richard Nixon, and uh, as everyone knows, and there was... Uh, the, 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 he did some appalling things. I mean, <laughs> I don't care what people say. I mean, he did some, uh, you know, the bombing of Cambodia and the stubborn refusal to withdraw. Without risk, there's no heroism, there's no history. Nixon was born to do this. Give history a nudge. Come on. Good here. I mean, if Cambodia doesn't work, we'll bomb Hanoi if we have to. That's right. Then, if necessary, I'll drop the big one. His crimes in high office, which were, I guess, unforgivable. But nevertheless, he was a, a remarkable man, and a, and I think a tragic man. The director of the film, Oliver Stone, believes that Nixon was the most dominant figure in American politics since Roosevelt. Would you agree with that? If that's what Oliver Stone believes, I, I go along with that. I think it was, I think it was, an, in, is that the word, in, innovative um, president? And it's tragic that he didn't last the course. It's tragic that he got ensnared in that mess of Watergate. And what is even more tragic is, and uh, peculiar, is that if he, I think hubris and pride, overweening pride, one of the seven deadly sins is probably his downfall. If he could have only gone on television and apologized and for Watergate and admitting the scandal, admitting the mess, he probably would have saved his presidency and not brought it into infamy, which he did. How much historical and technical assistance did you receive from Nixon's former White House staff? Well, John Dean was present uh, some of the time. Alexander Butterfield, who revealed the uh, tapes to the committee, uh, was our technical advisor most of the time. He was there all the time, in fact. And I believe Butterfield actually helped you with adapting Nixon's gestures and speech. What happened was I came in, we, we had a photo session for on the Friday afternoon before first principal photography, and I walked into the White, into the Oval Office, and, you know, being an actor, I responded to it, the atmosphere, and I responded to what I was wearing, and I did the, the uh, Nixon slouch or the Nixon hunch, and, and uh, Butterfield said, that's it, you've got him. How do you compare the preparation for this difficult role for Nixon with other roles you've had? Well, it was a hard one because I had the vocal um, problem to deal with, you know, not being an American. And also uh, treading the fine line between impersonation and creating performance. You can eat her, Dick. In 60, she was worth five, six million votes. Yeah, don't worry. I'll use the old Nixon charm. Who could resist that? I think it was the toughest role I've ever played, and I've played some big ones like King Lear and Anthony and Cleopatra, and, uh... But this was a tough one. I've played the, the other parts I've played in recent years, like, you know, Silence of the Lambs or, um, Remains of the Day and Shadowlands and all those are... Those are easy. Oh, those are walkovers for me. I mean, they're, they're easy parts for me to play. Is it true that you had resigned yourself to being an average British stage actor before Silence of the Lambs came along? I was sort of resigned, you know, living a nice, respectable career. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, it's fine. I, 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 don't, I wouldn't have minded, I guess. But it was just good luck, you know, it was just good fortune. It's, uh, a lot of it is you have a bit of talent and maybe a lot of good fortune, and then it builds from there. Does it annoy you when people recognise you all the time? No, those people pay, pay me my wages if they... If they, if they say hello and I send an autograph, no, I'm very grateful to them if they recognise me because they're the people who keep me in work. What do you think of the general standard of acting these days? Pretty high. Really high. I think uh, there's a greater intensity in acting today. I think maybe a little too much, in, especially in American films. I think it's kind of... Now it's all becoming so raw and uh, violent and... Uh, do you think there's too much violence? I like a nice, quiet movie for a change. I, I, I'm a Clint Eastwood fan. I like those sort of movies. I like adventure films, I like um, fast movies, but not, not violent films, no, they're mindless if they get violent. Sir Anthony, thank you very much for your time, we appreciate you joining us. Thank you.